If by chance you have watched more than a few of my videos, you might have heard me say at some point that my long-term goal is to get video games into academia. When I have said this though, I have received some admittedly well-founded criticism. I've had a couple of academics say that my goal is moot because video games are already a part of academia. People write research papers on video games. There are academic journals dedicated to video games. When I heard this criticism, it made me realize that my mission statement just wasn't specific enough. What I mean when I say I want video games in academia is that I want them to be taught in academia, and not just to those who are majoring in video game design. I want them taught in the academic disciplines that study aspects of human society and culture, aka the humanities, stuff like philosophy, psychology, metaphysics, history, languages, classes centered on narrative design, and the like. In the same way that Shakespeare or Goethe or Nietzsche or Kant are studied for their academic relevance, I believe there are prolific games that can and should be studied alongside canonical works like these. Now, I'm the first to admit the major obstacles standing between myself and this goal. There is no video game whose profundity measures up to the likes of Crime and Punishment, or Don Quixote, or Romance of the Three Kingdoms. To create an English or philosophy program that centers on works like these, as well as video games, greatly risks denigrating the importance of those classical works. By that, I mean there's the possibility people would spend more time playing the games than they would reading the books. These are just a few of many other objections, but to all of them, I raise a simple retort. The easiest way to get a prospective student to learn something is to get them to fall in love with the subject. When I grew up and went to school, I didn't learn anything because I just didn't care about what was being taught. What made me care about things like philosophy, psychology, the history of religious thought, all of it was motivated by their inclusion in video games. If it weren't for games like Control, Xenogears, and Silent Hill, I would have never read the multitude of books that I have on psychoanalysis. If it weren't for games like Neo, Wolong, or the Shin Megami Tensei games, I would have never taken an interest in Eastern mythology. Video games are just one of many potential tools an educator can use to make someone fall in love with learning. Given the increasing ubiquity of the video game medium, it would be wise for passionate teachers to incorporate video games as a tool into their educational tool belt. But obviously, the question is, how? The how of the matter is something that I have thought about for a long time. I think the best way to address the how is not by focusing on how to incorporate the games into a curriculum at first, but which games, which stories, which worlds, which characters are of such a quality that they deserve to be studied, to be incorporated into the global cultural canon. My first attempt at trying to answer this question started a couple of months ago when I put out a survey to my audience. It wasn't the most scientifically sound survey, admittedly. Plus, given that the respondents are members of my audience, I acknowledge that their responses will likely carry a certain bias. Although, I will do my best to accommodate that bias when I analyze the results later. Anyways, I just wanted to use the results to spark a conversation. At the time of the survey's closing, I received 1,395 submissions. The first two questions asked the participant what their age was and whether or not they were ever an educator. The responses to both questions met pretty standard parameters, although I will say that the number of educators watching my channel was much higher than I was expecting, 8.1%. The third question asked whether or not video games were ever a part of the educational curriculum being taught. 77% of people said no, and 23% of people said yes. The fourth question was directed towards that 23% that said yes. I asked them which subject the game was included in. 42.2% of the people saying yes entered a not applicable response. This was for those who either responded no to question 3 or couldn't remember what game was taught to them. 
Obviously, the number one subject games were included in was technology, because the one surefire place to see games in an academic setting is if you're learning how to use computer software to make them, and great games make for great case studies. But what about the humanities? Well, 106 of the roughly 1400 participants said games were a part of their English curriculum, 78 said they were in history, 77 in philosophy, 71 in science, 66 in psychology, 62 in religion, mythology, and metaphysics, 56 in social studies, and 12 in other. Question 5 tried to determine which games were being taught in these classes. I will focus on the top 10, but if you want the full results, please refer to the description box. At number 10, we have 5 entries. Nier, Fallout, Pong, World of Warcraft, and God of War, each of which got 7 mentions. At number 9, we got Doom. At number 8, Portal. At number 7, we got 3 entries. Bioshock, Assassin's Creed, and The Legend of Zelda each got 10 mentions. At number 6, Oregon Trail. At number 5, the Final Fantasy series. At number 4, Metal Gear Solid. At number 3, Silent Hill. At number 2, the Mario series. And number 1, Minecraft. I also did a separate list where I took the responses from educators specifically. And for the most part, there was a lot of commonality, save for the inclusion of the Soulsborne games and the Legacy of Cain. My first impression upon looking at this list is that about half of the games don't have much educational value as it pertains to the humanities, save for maybe their historical importance. Games like Mario, Doom, and Pong, while significant to video game history, don't teach us much about ethics, for instance. Oregon Trail is fine in regards to teaching people about American history, but it's incredibly outdated in many respects. Minecraft, that one's a bit iffy. Minecraft can teach kids pattern recognition, resource management, and teamwork, but I don't think those benefits are great enough that Minecraft should become a huge mainstay in every school curriculum. I say that because Minecraft can become hella addictive and make kids not want to do their other homework. In short bursts, sure but long term, probably not. Now to effectively address the other games on this list, I need to also introduce the results from the final question on the survey. What games should be taught in school? Again, I'm just going to focus on the top 10. If you want the full results, look in the description box. At number 10, the Deus Ex series. At number 9, the Fallout series with a particular emphasis on Fallout New Vegas. At number 8, the Persona series. At number 7, Disco Elysium. At number 6, the Soulsborne series. That would be Dark Souls and Bloodborne. At number 5, Bioshock. At number 4, the Nier series, with a particular emphasis on Automata over Replicant. At number 3, Planescape Torment. At number 2, the Silent Hill series. And at number 1, the Metal Gear Solid series. Oh my god, I love my audience. Wow, I just... <laughs> I just did the clapping emoji thing unironically. Quickly, before I explain the academic value these 10 games have, I want to do two quick things. Compare it to the other list, and then also do some bias accommodation, like I said I would. First, where did the less educational games from the first list show up on the second list? The Mario series was at number 2 on the first list, but on the second list, Mario comes in at number 36. Doom was at number 9 on the first list, but 41 on the second. Zelda was at 7 on the first list, but 28 on the second. Games that were on the first list that received no mention on the second included Oregon Trail, Pong, and World of Warcraft. I will say though that Final Fantasy, Portal, and Minecraft were in the top 20 on the second list. 
Now as for bias, I imagine that if this survey were completed with a more diverse sample size, there might be games included that may or may not be taught in philosophy or psychology classes, but would be studied for the sheer quality of their storytelling. This would include games like The Last of Us, God of War, and The Walking Dead. And of course, there would be less popular titles that would need to be studied, but that would need to be left up to the discretion of the educators. Hypothetically, if I were on such a board, I would include games like The Talos Principle, any of the Xeno series games, Shadow of the Colossus, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, as well as a series of very short, artistic games. If you want a full list of those short games that I would include, check out my video titled 10 Life-Changing Games You Can Finish in One Setting. With that done, let's turn our attention back to the top 10 games that my audience felt should be taught. I won't go into every reason why these games belong on the list right now because that would take way too long, but I will provide some basic reasoning. If you want to learn more about each game, I will cite some of my videos that I did on these games on screen and include links to them in the description box. Now, let's start our analysis by assigning these games to certain disciplines. With the exception of Silent Hill and maybe Persona, each of these games is filled to the brim with philosophical theory. If the aim was to introduce people to a broad variety of philosophical concepts, their commonalities and conflicts, Planescape Torment is easily the best game to start with. If the aim is to look at the contrast between political philosophies, Bioshock would probably be the easiest to approach and understand. It's a non-preachy political fable that, on the one hand, shows what happens when both sides of the political spectrum go to extremes. On the other hand, though, it gives both sides powerful arguments that force you to examine your own moral and political orientation. Disco Elysium is similar in that regard, but it's much longer and much more complex than Bioshock. It absolutely should be included, don't get me wrong, it would just bring its own challenges. Same with Metal Gear Solid, Deus Ex, and Fallout. The storylines in those games are so numerous and interwoven that it would be impossible to study them in their entirety. And good luck convincing an educational board to create a course where all you do is study their stories. A curriculum that includes the philosophy of those game series would need to focus on fragments, ideally the moments where the characters are engaged in the most rigorous philosophical discourse, like the conversations with the bartenders in Deus Ex 1, or of course the Final Codec conversation from Metal Gear Solid 2. Although, I will say, if argued correctly, one might be able to convince an educational board about why it might be worthwhile to base an entire course on existential philosophy around Nier, but I will save that argument for another time. In regards to psychology, this is where games like Silent Hill and Persona would shine. They make the basic concepts of psychoanalysis like Freud's model of the psyche and Jung's collective unconscious easily apprehensible. Although, if you were to provide a complete education beyond the basics, you would need to dive into games that weren't mentioned in the top 10, like Control, Alan Wake, Xenogears, Xenosaga, and maybe Observer. With those games, you can get into more difficult psychological concepts, like gendered complexes, the influence of consciousness on material phenomena, etc. Finally, in regards to Dark Souls, <sighs> No doubt that the storytelling and world building in that and Bloodborne are unparalleled, but good luck getting the average person, like the casual gamer, to push through the learning curve to see that narrative brilliance. Dark Souls and Bloodborne might need to be reserved for a more intermediate academic. The only way I could see these games taught to freshmen is if they were taking a course on occult religious symbolism, and the professor drew on those games for a few examples. That, or if you're looking to teach a psychology student what it's like to deal with depression, Dark Souls is a pretty adequate simulator. Anyways guys, this is just a broad overview of the results. I do have many ideas regarding how to structure a class or a course around these games and their concepts. 
If you would like to see videos with titles like how to use games to teach philosophy or which games should be taught in English classes, let me know by giving this video a like or leaving a comment. If you know a professor that likes video games, share this video with them and get their thoughts. I'd especially love to hear from them if they have any criticism. Oh also, was there a game that didn't make the final list that you thought should be on there? Or does the final list line up with your tastes? I'd love to hear from you about that. Finally, if you like the work I do here and want to help ensure its continued production, please consider supporting me on Patreon or joining my YouTube member section. I will leave a link to both in the description box below. Thanks guys, and until my next video, I want to remind you as always and as per usual, stay yellow.